Hello everyone, my name is Helga and you're on my anime channel. Last week they announced the nominees for the Crunchyroll Anime Awards. And today, same as last year, I would like to share my picks and predictions with you. But this year it's gonna be a little bit different because surprisingly, among the nominees there are very few titles that I have seen. It's really astonishing because 2020 has actually become a record for me in terms of the number of ongoing titles that I managed to check out. So let's look at the nominees anyway and see what I can say about them. Also, for this video to be more interesting, I will add the anime titles or the characters that would become winners for me if I had to choose among the titles that I saw in 2020. So let's go! We'll leave the anime of the year for the end of the video and start with the best protagonist. Here we have the protagonists of Decadence, my Next Life as a Villainess, Jujutsu Kaisen, The Misfit of Demon King Academy, Keep Your Hands Off Eizouken, and Haikyuu. Among all of them, I'm only familiar with uh, Yuji Tadori, Katarina Klaas, and Midori Asakusa. I have seen the first couple of episodes of Jujutsu Kaisen and to tell you the truth, I didn't get all the hype around the series because it seemed like a typical shonen to me and the premise was not up my alley. Also, I didn't get interested in the characters enough to continue watching the show, so I wouldn't vote for its protagonist. I have finished my next life as a villainess though and liked its plot and the characters quite a bit, so I will give my vote to Katarina. The next one is the best antagonist. And I'm really surprised to see Echidna from ReZero here because I don't believe she qualifies for this category. How I understand it, an antagonist is someone who performs some actions against the main character or characters, and it's not the case with Echidna at all. So although I kind of like her, I'm not sure if she would be my pick here. And the other nominees I'm just not familiar with, so as I promised, I'll name the character that I would nominate for this category. And it's Fukuda aka Perforator from Eden Baited. I have made a review of this anime on my channel where I specifically talked about why I like this character, so I really recommend you checking it out. We're moving to the best boy category. And here half of the characters nominated are the same that we saw among the best protagonist candidates. I personally find it quite weird. But as far as my prediction goes, I think the winner will be either the main character of Haikyuu or Anna's Voldegode, because he's quite popular. I haven't seen The Misfit of Demon King Academy, but I have heard a lot about him. As for my pick, among the titles that I have seen, it would be Arthur from Fire Force, because we saw a lot of him last year, including his backstory. And I really like that he's this weirdo who is actually really strong, but can only express his full power when he really believes in it. I find this metaphor quite appealing and inspiring. Now let's talk about the best girl category, where we again can find Katarina Klaas. Among the rest of the characters, I'm familiar with Sayaka Kanamori and Kaguya-sama, but I haven't seen the second season of Love is War and honestly I can't say that I like this heroine, so I'll pick Katarina again here. But if I could nominate my own character, it would be mine from Ascendance of Bookworm, because I really like her passion and devotion towards achieving her goals, as well as her cheerful personality. The next category is the best opening sequence, and among these nominees I've only checked out two shows, the first one is Jujutsu Kaisen, but its opening didn't become memorable for me at all, so I wouldn't give it my vote. The second one is Keep Your Hands Off Eizouken, which I really liked. But I would nominate the third opening of Fire Force here, which is my personal favorite, or the opening of Noblesse, because the song is really catchy and the visual sequence is nice too. And I'm actually really surprised that it's not here, because Noblesse is a Crunchyroll original and they even made a video interview about the creation of the song with its composer. The best ending sequence category is a little more interesting. Unlike the opening of Jujutsu Kaisen, I think its ending deserves to be here, because it really gets stuck in your mind from the first time you hear and see it. 
I also like the ending of The Millionaire Detective and I'll give it my vote, but if I had to choose one of my favorite endings of 2020 in general, I would definitely pick the ending song of It Invaded by Miyagi. The best voice acting performance I will give to Yusuke Kobayashi for Subaru because I have seen a few episodes of the second season of ReZero with subtitles and appreciated his work. I think his voice really matches the character and adds to his personality. As for the English voice performances, I have nothing to say about them because I watch anime either with Russian subtitles or dubbed in Russian, so I'm just gonna skip it. In the best drama category, I only know Fruits Basket, but I've only seen half of its first season, so it wouldn't be fair for me to vote for the second one. If I needed to choose one of the titles that I saw in 2020 for this category, I would pick The Day I Became a God. I know that this is an unpopular opinion, and I can't say that this show is perfect by any means, but it's the best one that I can name for this category among the last year's titles. The nominees for the best comedy are Keep Your Hands Off Azoken, Kaguya Sama Love is War, My Next Life is a Villainess, Sleepy Princess in the Demon Castle, Kakushi Goto, and The Misfit of Demon King Academy. I gave my vote to My Next Life as a Villainess because some of its jokes were really funny and well executed. But I can't predict Kaguya Sama winning this year too because it has a lot of fans who appreciate humor in it. The best couple is, I think, usually the category with the weirdest nominees, because some of them can't even remotely be called couples. So although, as you already know, I liked My Next Life as a Villainess, I wouldn't vote for Katarina and Maria, because we didn't have any prerequisites for them actually becoming a thing. But I think all of these nominees have a good chance to win, because Tony Kawa has been talked a lot about on any tube, as well as Kaguya-sama, and I think the characters from Beastars also have a shot. In the best fantasy category, I have completed two shows, which are Zero Season 2 Part 1 and Descendants of a Bookworm Part 2. And same as the previous year, I gave my vote to Ascendance of a Bookworm, because I really like its story and the protagonist. I'm actually thinking of reading the light novel series for it too. And the second season actually had a little more action and character development, which I find enriched the original idea. But I'm still not sure if I agree with putting it into the fantasy category. Of course, the main events of the show take place in a fantasy world, but I always expect Crunchyroll to make a special category for Isekai, because this genre is very specific and there are a lot of titles that come out in it each year, so I don't see why they put Isekai shows in the fantasy category. Talking about the best character design, I'm giving my vote to keep your hands off Ezo Ken, the first episode of which I checked out right before filming this video. And I found its characters unconventional but really attractive, and I think their personal characteristics are reflected in their appearances, so I'll be really happy if this anime gets this award. And I think I'll also vote for this show in the categories of the best director and the best animation, because I was truly mesmerized by the structure and the visuals of the show. Unfortunately, I haven't checked out the full thing yet, as I said, but I'll definitely do it as soon as possible. I haven't seen Tower of God, but I'm almost sure that Kevin Penkin will win the best score, because he's a very famous anime composer and there are a lot of people who admire his work. I don't have much to say about the best fight scene, because as I've mentioned in my videos, I don't usually remember them well, but I'll give my vote to the one in Sword Art Elicization, because as far as I remember, the fight scenes in it were pretty good. So now, let's finally go to the main category of the awards, which is the anime of the year. And I'll tell you right away that I think Jujutsu Kaisen will win in this one, because based on the experience of the previous years, people tend to choose a popular shonen as their favorite. And I think this year won't be an exception. But as for me, I would like uh, Keep Your Hands Off Azo Ken to win, because in my opinion, it has much more artistic value. As for the shows of 2020 that I have completed, I think you can already guess that my favorite has become It Invaded.
I know that I talk a lot about it, but it's really worth watching. It's a detective thriller that delves into the psychology of criminals and has a great main character. And as I mentioned, one of its villains is also very interesting to follow. I have a separate video about it, so check it out if you're interested. So these were my thoughts about the nominees of the Crunchyroll 2021 Anime Awards, as well as my predictions and my own picks for each category. Share in the comments below which titles or characters you think deserve to win. Also give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel for more anime related videos and click the little bell icon to get all the notifications from it. Hope to see you soon, bye!